friends, welcome to Kitchen Princess Bamboo Japanese Everyday Food. Today, I'm going to be making traditional umeboshi. Umeboshi is a staple Japanese food, as you may already know. Super sour and salty, has a unique flavor. It's a secret of longevity. People buy umeboshi these days, but I'm stick on my homemade. This is the last umeshigoto of the year. Let's get started a year journey with me. Umeboshi is made of ripe yellow Japanese plum, which is closely related to apricot. These are in the market at the beginning of June to July. These guys go into a paper bag until it turns yellow for a day or two. Since the plum would ripe so quickly, let's prepare the yellow one first. Wash ume and pat dry. Sprinkle some salt from the recipe and cover with a piece of plastic. Place a weight on top, set aside until the other ume turns yellow. The next day, greenish ume look like this. It's okay to go. Wash ume gently, changing the water several times. If you find a ume with a dark spot or too ripe like this, Take out and discard. Drain the ume and pat dry. Take off the stem end by using a skewer. Before we pickle the ume, we have to sterilize the container. In a medium sized bowl, put your clean ume in. Sprinkle a dash of shochu or other booze to prevent mold from growing. Toast to coat. Add in salt to barely coat the surface. Transfer to a container. Continue working in batches. These are the ume from the previous day. Add some more salt and put it into the container. Sprinkle the rest of the salt. Place a sterilized dish directly onto the ume. Put the weight on it to evenly pickled. Cover with a lid and leave it at the cool dark place until the moisture comes out. If the ume is ripe enough, it's going to take about a week or so. While we are waiting, let's prepare the red sisal leaves. The red sisal leaves dyed umeboshi to its signature color red. You can make umeboshi without using red sisal leaves, but I like the aroma and the color of red sisal. Spin the red sisal leaves in a salad spinner and take the excess moisture out. Take half of the red sisal leaves in a large bowl, add in a tablespoon of salt from the recipe. Rub and press to make it soft. To remove the bitter component in the red sisal leaves. Once the red sisal leaves soft and shrink, add in the rest of the leaves. Sprinkle one tablespoon of salt, then rub to soften the leaves. Squeeze to remove the liquid and discard. Put it back in the bowl, add in the rest of the salt. Rub to remove the bitter liquid one more time. I always do this twice to remove bitterness as much as I can. Squeeze tightly and keep it in the fridge until the ume is ready. Let's take a look at the salted ume. These are the third day. Some salt remain, so gently stir to dissolve. Place the dish and wait back in and leave the couple of days more. After a couple of days, it should look like this. Ume is submerged in the liquid of its own. The liquid is called shira umezu, literally means white plum vinegar. Here comes the fun part. Take your prepared wet sisal leaves out from the fridge and combine with the liquid. Ladle over the wet sisal leaves and loosen with your hand. And it will turn into purplish pink. And press the dish and wait again. After a week or so, check how it goes. It is not dyed yet, but it looks fine. Let's change the weight to 1 kg to die slowly. Leave it for about a month until the Japanese rainy season is over. 
which means around the 20th of July. Now we are going to sun dry the ume. Umeboshi is translated into sun dried plum. After sun drying, you can call it umeboshi. Before sun drying, check the weather forecast to choose the sunny days in three straight days. We are going to sun dry ume for three days. Drain ume and line them on a bamboo mat. Line the leftover umeboshi from the last year at the same time. You can keep it longer if you have one. Let them sun dry at the sunny spot. This is called aka umezu, which means red plum vinegar. Let it sun dry as well. Flip them over once or twice a day. Take them inside at night. Repeat the process for the next day and the third day. The red sisal leaves make an excellent furikake. When it dries out completely, process until powdered. Pass through a sieve to remove stiff vein. Pack in a small bag to preserve. I am using a sushi mat pressed on cardboard. But wait, why we sun dry ume? Here is why. First, sunlight disinfects ume to preserve well and dries out excess moisture. After three days of sun drying, the ume fresh gets a little firm on the surface and moist on the inside. These are the traditional umeboshi. This is sweet and sour ume, a kind of new style but I like this better. It's not too sour and the fresh is moist and juicy. The rock sugar dissolves in the vinegar slowly so the ume fresh won't shrink. You can make red ginger pickles with leftover red ume vinegar. Let the both umeboshi leave it at cool place about a year to age. It feels milder and deeper in taste. But to tell you the truth, I have never tried the one before aging. Let me show you how to enjoy umeboshi. Put umeboshi on top of a bowl of rice. Before the Japanese economical growth, our previous generations eat this kind of meal, rice and pickles. Umeboshi is the saltiest pickles in Japan, so you can eat a whole bowl of rice with one umeboshi. Umeboshi contains lots of nutrients, for example, stric acid, the anti-inflammatory property, helping digestion and improve metabolism. This zombie umeboshi is cooked with rice in summer. Umeboshi gives an antibacterial effect to steam rice. It's always good idea adding umeboshi to teriyaki sauce in summer. Just a little bit of umeboshi gives a nice kick to teriyaki sauce. Place on top of the rice bowl and bind with a piece of nori. There you have an open face onigiri. For the rest of the rice, shred the umeboshi into tiny pieces. Add scrambled egg which made into small pieces and bonito flakes. Toast to combine. Add a dash of soy sauce if it's not seasoned enough. Shape into a bowl and wrap in a piece of the nori. There you have two kinds of rice balls with a hint of umeboshi. These are for my son's lunch. Last but not least, umecha. After eating the fresh, pour hot green tea over the stone. Drinking this tea will stabilize your blood sugar after the meal. So refreshing. Maybe you don't have the ingredients in your area, but I believe good to know our traditional umeboshi making process. Thank you for watching my epic umeboshi episode. If you have any questions and future video requests, let me know in the comment. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. 
Go to my website, princessbamboo.com, for more information and follow me on my social media for the daily update. My store on Amazon o p e n 24 7 so check my list of ingredients and tools. Thanks again, and I will see you in a week. Bye!